In this video, we will talk about platelet aggregation studies. So, in this video, we will talk about the principle, discuss the methods, and the interpretation. So, platelet aggregometry is carried out in a specialized hematology laboratories. And um, if platelet dysfunction is suspected, then this test is carried out. And then platelet aggregation studies are carried out on a PRP, platelet-rich plasma, using an aggregometer. And then commonly used platelet aggregating agents are ATP, epinephrine, collagen, arachidonic acid, and ristocetin. So this is an aggregometer. So this is where you work, you put your workload, and then on the computer screen, the results will be shown by curves showing the curves so let's look into the principle so platelet rich plasma is uh, slightly turbid to the presence of platelets which is in suspension and when this platelet aggregates the turbidity decreases so a light beam is directly passed through the BRP in a cuvette and the percent transmission or the optical density is recorded on a linear recorder and the contents of the cubit have to be stirred constantly and kept at 37 degrees celsius so when atp epinephrine or collagen is added to the prp the formation of platelet clumps produces an increase in the percentage of transmission or a decrease in the optical density which is recorded and a photoelectric colorimeter uh, or one of the commercially available aggregation meters may be utilized and platelet aggregation is a function of the final concentration of the aggregating agent that is used so this is the interpretation so this is a normal aggregation curves so we, w we have two types of curves biphasic curves and monophasic curves so this is the primary and the secondary that is shown by biphasic curve and this type of a curve is shown by ATP and epinephrine and monophasic curve we have only one so this type of a curve is shown by collagen, arachidonic acid and mistocidine so in platelet disorders like Bernard Seller syndrome, Kranzmann thrombosynia, storage pool defect, aspirin like defect and von Willebrand disease the platelet, aggrega uh, platelet aggregation pattern will show whether it is normal or whether it is, it is deficient. So, for example, if you want to mm, rule out Kranzmann's thrombosthenia, the aggregation pattern will be deficient with ADB, epinephrine, collagen, and arachidonic acid, whereas normal with ristocele. Let, let's have a look. So, this is uh, platelet aggregation curves in transmens thrombosthenia so we have deficient ADP deficient collagen and then normal ristocytin so I hope you have understood with the principle and interpretation so let's go to the procedure so to perform this test you will need pipettes centrifuge, a computer, agricometer, and reagents. So first step is taking 500 microliters of water and it is added into the vial that we get commercially. Uh, 500 microliters of water is added to the vial of ADP and is mixed by inversion. So switch on the computer and then choose the software for uh, choose the software to run the aquicometer. Now blood samples for platelet aquicometry assays should be taken using flipotomy kit, and then this kit contains swab, plasters, tourniquets, and a large gauge, butterfly needle, and sidrate tubes or blue cap tubes. So to prepare the samples for platelet aggregation, citrate tube must be uh, standing 
at room temperature and placed into the PTQ. So, uh, as you know, the procedure for centrifugation, you close the lid and then select the PRP setting. So, um, when the centrifuge has finished spinning, the lid will open and you take out the tubes which have been separated into red cells and plasma layers. As you can see here the plasma. Then aspirate the PRP which contains platelets in suspension which is quite looking cloudy into the tube labeled as PRP. And then replace the vacuutainer tubes back into the PTQ centrifuge and then select the PPP select the PPP setting and then uh, stand the centrifuge and after 2 minutes um, the centrifuge will open so after the spin the platelets have been removed from the plasma and the platelet poor plasma is now quite clean so I spirit the platelet poor plasma into the tubes labeled as PPP so for each well being used, take a test tube and then add it into the incubation wells. Plus one addition tubes for the plank. So for patient sample, so so for patient sample, we use the platelet pore plasma as the planks. So since this has no platelets in it, it is used to set. Uh, the hundred percent aggregation mark. So to the blank wells, transfer the tube containing platelet poor plasma into the first well. So pressing the tube down firmly and then closing the lid, transfer the tube into the next well that is being used and again press plank on the screen. Alright, so repeat the process for each wheel being used now once all the wheels are plopped or are, are planked I and mean, planked we can prepare our samples of platelet rich plasma so add a stirrer add a stir bar into each test tube being used just just one uh, stir bar per tube transfer these tubes into the stir sample incubation wells to each tube, all uh, add 230, uh, I mean 225 microliter of P PRP. So incubate for two minutes using the timer, using the timer into the system. So when these two two minutes are up, transfer the tubes into the test wells where the aggregation is measured. So make sure to press each tube down into the bottom of the well so that there is no um, misreading and then close the lid so press the start button on the screen for each well to begin uh, the recording of aggregation and then add 25 mi microliter of ATP into the well 3 injecting through the lid and then press inject on the screen and as you can see after injecting on the screen then repeat the for the next wheel so once all the aggregation are in progress you can press height to watch the aggregation as they happen and then aggregation will proceed from 6 minutes and then it will go on and on after which you can accept the tracing so this is how it goes i hope you so you, i hope you have understood thank you